Hello and welcome to Black Desert, or welcome back to Black Desert if you watched the first video or any of the other videos, because this isn't actually serious, so it could be in a random order. Today we're going to talk about trading. Trading is a thing. It's a way to make money. It's, it's not exactly the greatest money in the game and until or if other things get nerfed, but it will make you money. Uh, quite a fair amount at higher trading levels, but it takes a long time to get there, so bear that in mind. Uh, if you do want to trade, look for these people that are on... I wish that icon would disappear. The people that are that are positioned underneath the kind of wagon looking icons. It's kind of hard to see the icons because people are appearing on top of them. This one right here. That would be your trade person. Now in order to do trade or even sell items, sell trade items that you get from quests because there are quite a few of those, which pretty good value actually. You'll need to have the areas linked. For quests, you'll need to have the the area that the quest is in linked to wherever you're trying to sell it. Like if you got something from the um, fish people things over here whose name I've actually forgotten, you would have to link this hub to the keyboard to this town so you can sell it at this warehouse. You can only buy or sell goods at warehouses. So bear that in mind. We're going to be using my little cart because it's what I have. So, you know, you can use yourself or a donkey if you don't have a cart or uh, one of the, the higher, more expensive carts if you have those available. But you're gonna wanna talk to the, the, the person, <laughs> the person, click the shopping icon, it'll bring up this. This has a lot of information that is, for the most part, not really too important unless you're doing, you know, extreme high tier trading or min-maxing profits or whatever, but it, you can't really affect all the things. And early on, you have such limited things that you can purchase, as you can see here, I can only purchase one thing in this town, uh, that you kind of just have to work with it. So the important things to see here, obviously this is a picture of the item, name of the item, blah blah blah. Uh, this is the quantity they have, so in this case I can buy a maximum of seven, and they'll replenish a certain number of each item every hour. Um, this is the current value, so it's 102% of the base value, which is 775 for this item. That is its current value, 794, you, you, you get how this works. And then this item, this right here is you can purchase it, or the purchasing requirements or whatever. In this case, we can buy this, so it's just saying, okay. Uh, this one is saying you need this rank level 2 of trading. Uh, I am currently this rank. So let's say you start the game at tier 0 in every skill. I'm tier 1 level 6, so in one more level I'd be able to buy these frog feet things. Um, or these, and I believe this is the, this would basically be tier 2, level 7. So another, and another entire 10 levels ahead of where I am. Uh, the leveling system works on a tier system, but whatever. So in my case, my cart can carry a maximum of 6 items, or a maximum of 270 LT. So I can't actually buy all 6, or fill all 6 slots, because it would take me over my weight limit. You can see down there. Uh, when you purchase an item or when you list when you ask to purchase an item it'll tell you the total weight of whatever is in your cart and of course the total cost uh the this the slots currently used on whatever you're going to be carrying this stuff with in this case the cart because it's next to her uh your current available weight capacity and then this would be whatever is left over but if you're using a cart you can ignore these two numbers because these are for your person rather than the cart you just have to kind of remember your cart's maximum weight uh no we don't want to buy that because if i'm already full go away so we'll go ahead and exit out because we have purchased our goods as you can see my cart as well as having a horse inside of it, it has some goods inside of it so we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump on our cart and we're going to path to this town, because why the heck not? Uh, this isn't going to be a this is the best trade route. You're going to have to figure that out yourself, uh, because, you, you know, if I make a video and say this is a good trade route, it won't be a good trade route if a bunch of people see it. So in order, you can see, in order to do these trades, I have to have these two towns linked by a continuous pathway. In this case, these two nodes here. For the purposes of showing stuff, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, unlink the node. Click on the node and then click this little purple button. It will unlink it. So if I went to this town to try and sell goods bought here, it would sell at 30% value. 
which means it's not linked to wherever the good came from. And this, this is true for quest goods as well. If it says 30%, then you're not linked to wherever that came from. So just trial and error to figure out where it came from. Or, or remember if you, if you just recently got the good. But because these aren't linked, we're gonna have to actually make a stop here to link the locations. So this car has the worst turning radius, but great physics. Also, you're gonna have to deal with the black thing making no, no, no sounds in the background periodically. That was my impression of the black thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. The spirit, I guess. Uh, it's got a bunch of quests that I'm pretty sure I've finished, but uh, when I try and turn them in, it brings up a message, and I haven't bothered to translate the message yet. So basically, I'm just I'm just ignoring it. So I apologize if it makes a bunch of sounds in the middle of this, but whatever. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and cut, edit, do some fancy shenaniganry, whatever I'm doing, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim some of this out and see you guys when we get to that spot that we're heading to to relink the pathway. Alrighty, we're here and I accidentally stopped when trying to start the recording. Apparently that message at the top of my screen is just going to be there forever, but whatever. When you tell the game to path you... We don't have to park right next to him. In fact, didn't actually mean to do that. We shot forward. When you tell the game to path you to a, a destination like this, it will automatically path you to the person you need to talk to in order to link it. So go ahead and talk to whoever it pathed you to, in this case, this man right here, and click this button right here, which is, you know, your, your kind of worker working button. It'll bring you to the map, and then it'll bring up this little window that you saw before. Except now this button is here. Before we do that, you do have to talk to the person in order to link it. It says right here you need to talk to the person, be in person, in order to actually get the link for this. So, do bear that in mind when, you, uh, when, you're, when, you're when you're planning out trade routes. Bear in mind that you do have to be in person to link things. Um, in this case, this has some relatively useful information, but in our, in our case, all we really care about is this down here. This is telling us it takes three contribution points, which... I just disabled it, so we have exactly three. So you go ahead, click that button, it'll link. It'll be like, yay, you linked a thing. And now we have a completed trade route between these two towns. So we can go ahead and finish our trade. Actually, I don't want a path to the town. I want a path to the trader. Trader, not traitor. Be weird if, was, if knew where a trader was and wasn't telling anyone. That'd be a bit bizarre, but anyway. It's just gonna be a whole lot more of this walking. This is basically what trading is. But, before I go ahead and cut, there's one more thing I wanted to point out, and that's this icon right here. You'll notice these around, there just zoom out a little bit. There's one there, one there, one over in the corner, there's a couple up here. Um, these are these move periodically, they'll move around, but they generally stick in a, in a certain area. Like this one will stick in kind of this, this pathway of this road right here. So they'll move up and down that, this one will move around in this kind of little intersection area. I believe this one hangs around this bridge. Uh, I haven't been keeping an eye on these over here because they're not really an issue. Those are bandits. If you path through those areas, you will get attacked by a group of bandits. A couple of them include archers. Uh, your cart is strong, but it can only take so many hits. I think it can only take like six, seven hits of enemies that aren't, you know, joke enemies that are way below your level. Um, if you're not using carts or anything like that, you're using a donkey or yourself. Uh, they will attack you because they cannot attack the donkey. The donkey is a unstoppable and an immovable force both combined, so they won't mess with that. So just bear in mind, uh, if you're worried about your cart or you just want to avoid having to pay repairs or anything like that, um, path slightly off of the road when you come across these little areas here. For instance, instead of just auto-pathing through that, you could cut through here, and that would keep from spawning those. You, this one, you could just, you know, not go not go out of the path exit of that. Uh, and that'll keep you from having to deal with that. They're generally not an issue, but there are some hidden... Um, what's going on there? There are some hidden ambushes. Uh, the only one I've encountered that I remember is one that is generally along this path of this split road here. It's generally along the shorter path that the auto run will take you through. Uh, and these always spawn for me. I'm level 32. I've only ever seen them purple, which means they're well above my level. 
Um, so just bear that in mind, there, there could be others, it, it could just be me not noticing the bandit icon, but I've never noticed a bandit icon over there. Uh, so just bear in mind, it's, it's a little bit dangerous to be running around, uh, especially if you lose your cart or whatever, it could be kind of annoying. Uh, but just bear that in mind. So we're already here, and in fact, I'm not actually gonna have to edit the video at all this time because I've decided to blather forever. There goes Sketch. Bye, Sketch. I think Sketch is in the, uh, thing. Thing that shall not be spoken of. Either way, we're here. We're gonna go ahead and stop near the NPC. Make sure... Uh, it's hard to make these things stop. Make sure your, your cart or whatever is carrying the goods is actually linked to the NPC. You'll see a little circle and a line connecting you. That just makes sure you're within range for your your carriage or whatever for, to actually trade the goods. Now this wasn't a good trade run. I wasn't expecting it to be a good trade run. I'm primarily doing trade runs right now for the experience, the trade experience. So we are going to sell these at 822 silver right now. If I click on this, it'll bring up this thing. You can see the the chart that shows you know it's not been good on the sell side, uh, and that'll give us a profit of 28. 28 silver, which is absolute garbage and not worth the time that that took. Uh, other important stuff here, this is the current selling price, so 99%. Uh, this right here is the, I believe it translates to guaranteed price. Uh, as long as it's 100%, you don't really need to worry too much about it. It'll pretty much always be 100%. Uh, this over here is... If it's not 100%, just try to make the people like you. Um, they can not like you by clicking this button, and then you can fluster them and they'll be unhappy, but... This right here is, um, and I'm not going to talk about that button right now, just you can mess with that if you want. This is right here is your distance bonus, so we get a 7% bonus to the price because of the distance we traveled. Uh, don't rely too much on the distance bonus making you money. It's not very substantial. Really, you'll want to buy stuff like this goods that were, um, you know, as low as they can get, preferably, and then sell them at a place where they're at least above this middle line. Uh, it's very unlikely you'll be getting uh, goods that are all the way down and all the way up. And usually they kind of they kind of flow together because people will be trading them, etc, etc. So that is how you do trading get one one of these kites to fill the rest of that cart that is the basics of trading buy low sell high find your routes uh, to, to maximize profit over time I like how that town is just over there maximize your profit you know over the time spent traveling uh, generally shorter routes that are not frequently used um, shorter routes with a lot of different stops like for instance when I was getting XP I was just running around this town but Maybe there's something down here or, or over here where there's a lot of these trade nodes that you have the skill level to trade in. You can just go in a circle and trade in those. And that'll generally make you more money per hour than running from this town all the way to this town and then all the way back and repeating that. It'll generally make you more money that way. So, you know, just, that's a thing. Anyway, that's, that's the general basics of trading. Make sure you have your nodes linked if it says 30% value, if it's selling at 30% value, that means your nodes are not linked, so, you know, just make sure that's going. Buy low, sell high, that's that's pretty much trading in a nutshell. So thanks for watching me and uh, whatever the heck's going on with this character's face. We'll see you guys next time.